years ago, I remember I was speaking at an event in Australia and in so many of these different schools across the country, they had built these brand new learning spaces that were absolutely state of the art. Some of the most beautiful spaces I've ever seen in schools, including to this day. And there was a new media center and it replaced the old library. And I remember touring it, going into it with a bunch of educators and seeing all the state of our technology, the different spaces where they would set up for students to collaborate, to connect with one another, have some conversations. And I remember just marveling at this space. It was so beautiful. It lent itself to collaboration so well. And I was having a conversation with somebody and I remember the person who was in charge of the space going, shh, and immediately I thought they're acting like it's an old school library. So you have this totally brand new space with all these brand new opportunities, but we're bringing some of the old thinking into that space. And I understand there's time for quiet in different spaces, but it was basically an open room. There was no students, but the mentality was this space is one where you don't talk to each other, where you don't connect even though it was literally built for collaboration. It was built to create things together. And I've worked with so many brand new schools as they open to ensure how do we think differently when we're in this different space? How do we not actually bring in the old thinking to this new space? And it's not that you can't use some of the things that you've used in the past to benefit the things that we do today in these new spaces. But if you're simply just trying to do old stuff in a beautiful building, it doesn't seem to make much sense. And that's why I really love talking with Principal Keith Fickle today because he has had the opportunity and blessing to open a brand new school and to actually talk to him in the first month of it to hear about how he helped with his staff build the school together. Not someone else came in and actually created the logo, created the design for the school, but actually bring a, a collaborative effort. So you can see your fingerprints as a community building this together was really, really inspiring. And the thing that I love, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you it, I'm going to give you a little teaser here, is how they decided the name of the school. It, it, is, it is such an inspiring story. And it really meant a lot when I heard that today. And I know you're going to appreciate it. So I hope you enjoy the podcast. I really enjoyed my, talk, my time talking with Keith. He's a brilliant mind. Uh, he's doing some really great things. And whether you're in a brand new space or one that's 100 years old, I promise you there is so much to benefit from Keith's thinking. And I hope you enjoy this. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed today to have Keith Fickle, who just opened a brand new school, Almeda Crawford High School in Fort Bend ISD. It's just outside of Houston. And I've had the opportunity to connect with Keith. I, Keith, I know you actually, I think you read my blog, actually, right? Like that's where we connected. Mm -hmm. You I sent do, an yeah. email. And uh, I was, I, I came out there to speak and Keith, before I even entered, he sent me such a nice email and welcomed me before I got there. And I, I was blessed to be there and actually meet Keith. And I sent a little video to your, to your community and your staff. And so uh, I want to give your staff, I know, cause they, they're going through a lot of changes too, a little shut up, right? So to everyone working out media, cause you know, a lot of times it's focused on the person opening it, but all of you are opening the school this year. It's not, it's not just you on your own. So uh, Keith, thanks for taking the time out of your super busy schedule. I know you got a million things to do, but I know people can learn from you. And that's why I really wanted to um, have you on the podcast. So if you can just kind of tell everyone who you are, what you do today and kind of how you got to that point, I think that's a great place to start. Sure. Thanks, George. It's great to, to be on your program today. So, um, yeah, my name is Keith Fickle, and this is my 30th year in education. I've uh, been in Fort Bend ISD here in Southwest Houston most of my career, and it's I've moved from being a teacher, a classroom teacher. I was a band director for about 17 years, and then I moved into the ranks of administration. 
um, from being a band director into being an assistant principal, uh, an associate principal, uh, and now a, a principal. So I've been through, I've, the only areas I've not taught, I've not taught elementary, but I've taught middle school most of my career and been a middle school administrator most of my career. So um, I did spend a year of being an assistant principal at a really great school here in our district called Willow Ridge High School, a school with a lot of spirit and pride. Once an eagle, always an eagle. Go ahead, Willow Ridge. <laughs> um, Got to give my shout out to my friends over there right. at Willow Ridge High School. Um, so, but this is my, really my first year back, kind of in the in the in the high school realms. Um, so, um, but I've been I was the principal at Sugarland Middle School uh, for for six years, and then the last year or so prior to the, this school year, I, I spent. I guess building a community and and working with uh, students and staff and parents and building uh, working slowly at building our our community here uh, to launch Almeda Crawford High School, which is named after an incredible uh, veteran educator of forty plus years at another uh, campus here in the district, which is known as the flagship, the original high school in Fort Bend. That's Dulles High School. They're the Vikings, but Mrs. Crawford was an English teacher there for close to forty years and uh, still living in the Houston area. And uh, what a great testament that this school is for her uh, and to give back to her and to her family for the impact that she has made on th literally thousands and thousands of, of, of families over the course of 40 years. So here we are opening a brand new high school. We open on August the 9th with about 600 kids in grades nine and 10. And everybody's new to one another. They're new to me. I'm new to them. The staff is new to one another. The students maybe are a little bit, um, you know, not necessarily new to one another because we were relieving a, a high school that desperately needed the, the relief for, for overcrowding because we're, we're right. growing so, so strongly here. But, uh, you know, we're, we're focusing on um, direction first and speed later, or one of our values that we're, we're working on. We don't have a set of formal core values yet, um, but one of them is that we're working with is this idea of valuing direction over speed so you know we're not we're not going to be able to be in you know two or three weeks what other people may have experienced at a school that's been open for 13 or 15 years right, right. so and they they had to have their genesis story so this year is you know the genesis story for for alameda crawford high school go chargers so tell okay i i gotta ask this i like i i didn't know that part about who the school is named after i didn't know that and like, I wish that happened more, you know? So there's so many schools being named after people. This is the first time I've ever heard one being named after a teacher, which I, I love, which is incredible. So like, how did that, how did that come about? Like, how, how did that happen? That's such a, that's awesome. I love that. I, I wish that would happen more. And so this is one of the reasons I want to have you on the podcast is I hope somebody hears this in another school district. It's like, yeah, we should start naming or schools after teachers that taught here. Like that's, that's amazing. So how did that come about? So formerly the school, this school uh, I'm at Crawford high school is known as high school number 12. So we're the 12th high school in the district. We're in a district of 80,000 kids. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was named principal in, I guess, late March of 2021, uh, right after we had our little ice Mageddon thing here in Texas, when the, everything froze, <laughs> right. power grid kind of nearly wow. failed. Um, I forgot it was called that. I forgot it. That was the name of it. It's, it is anything but cold right now. Let me right, tell you. Right. So, of course, you were here, so you know. I'm I know. It is, it is hot. So, um, around that same time, maybe March in that year, not too long after I was uh, named principal, the district always, our, our district's protocol is to gather input from the community and stakeholders about like, what would be, you know, a great name for whatever school. So Crawford High School is the high school that's opening now, but we also have two elementary schools that are opening, that opened along with us. And that's Ferguson Elementary and Butcher Elementary. And so for both, all three schools, they put together, they solicited names of, of people uh, from the community who they think would be worthy. And as you would imagine, all kinds of names from every walk of life, right. education, medicine, arts, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and they settled on, after having a committee uh, work on parsing through all this, the, the suggestions, and they they arrived at Almeda Crawford um, because number one there had not been a secondary or excuse me a high school named after a female uh, in Fort Bend so it was fitting uh, for that. Now we do have another secondary school that's named after a female and that's Krista McAuliffe uh, okay. Middle School. That's what actually feeds my previous campus Willow Ridge. That's a great campus. 
So, but that was a real big honor for um, for Mrs. Crawford and her family to wow. have been named that, uh, to have the school rather named after them. So we had to stop calling it High School 12, and now we're calling it Almeda Crawford High School. And um, much so, better name, much better yeah, name than High School 12. Absolutely, High School 12 sounds like a sci-fi movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, and I've been blessed over the last probably year and a half uh, after the school was named after her. She yeah. and her family, uh, we have connected. We've met on a couple of occasions. Her her son, Tori, and her daughter, uh, Rhonda, uh, we've we've met to talk about all kinds of things uh, about the school. We we got their input. In fact, you see behind me on my, my I guess, my background, you see our campus logo and the colors. So she was an integral, and she and her family were an I integral part of, of coming up with not only the colors and the color scheme, but also the, the mascot. Our students uh, were involved in, in those selections, and, and not just the selections, but also the design of the logo itself. So she and her family were in all of those meetings. And so what you see kind of behind me, I'll, I'll be like the weatherman and move out of the way here. You see that our lightning bolt C, uh, that's kind of like for being charged up. And then you yeah. got the horse, that's kind of this idea of forging ahead. So if you look inside the, the horse's head, you can actually see lightning bolts within the hair. So um, yeah. it's got this, this this idea of energy because Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Crawford's thing is she brings a lot of energy to the classroom. Um, okay. You know, so it's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a full disclosure moment here. I was, I was actually seeing the horse behind you and I was thinking that's kind of a bummer that you already have that because like that would have been a great opportunity to like build it with students. So I, I wasn't going to ask that. And then I'm so glad you said that. I was like, oh, that's, that's wonderful. Cause that's how it should be. Right. Like there's, there's a certain ownership when we actually have a say in building a new school that it's not just, you know, somebody sent it off to somebody and we had no part of the decision. Now there's some ownership over that too. The, the other thing I, I, I love about this story is a lot of times when schools are named after people, it's after people that are no longer with us. And I'm all about, you know, um, you know, giving these accolades to people while they still can appreciate them, not after the fact. And, and so I love that. And I love that she was part of it. I love your students are part of the design. That's absolutely, I love that. So I hope, I, I truly hope people are listening to that process and asking themselves, how do we do that as we're creating new spaces or maybe even renaming some spaces? Cause I know that that's happening all over the place. Uh, before we get into the new school stuff, and cause I'm going to ask you a couple of questions of that I'm really curious about, um, your experience as a band director going into administration. Because a lot of times, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm the only person maybe in the fine arts that I know who went into administration that I know. And I know this is not, is not I, I don't know everybody, but it's the only time I've ever heard this story specifically shared is uh, a friend of mine, Steve Bowler. He was an art teacher. He wanted to become a principal and then a superintendent. And how, like, what, what would you say? I have some ideas in my head, but I never was a band director, but I kind of have an idea. Like what were some of the things that you did as a band director that just made it uh, help with the transition to go into school administration? Yeah. You know, I get asked that uh, every yeah. now and then. So, um, and my, really my response to that is simply um, from a band director's lens, at least in my experience is that you are starting students from scratch in an instrument. Maybe the only thing they ever played prior to this was the stereo. Right. Yeah. So, um, but we get kids coming from scratch, making noises, you find a way to turn into music, but you are literally creating harmony out of cacophony where you're trying to bring all these different parts, uh, um, like the trumpets, learning how to play their instrument, but then learning how to play with the flutes who are learning to play their instrument, but bringing all of all of the, the various instruments together to make it like a cohesive performance. And it takes, um, it takes skill from the student's point of view to listen and re respond to one another when it comes to like playing in tune, to balancing, to not make, to make sure that the, the right instrument is playing at the right level of volume so that when you put the whole thing together, it's in tune, it's, it's harmonized and it, it just sounds good. You know, that whatever sounds good, whatever your definition for sounds good is that it, it meets that definition. 
And so it takes a lot of energy to do that. But then like in, in my experience, we have a pretty significant uh, private lesson program, private music instruction program, like having a private trumpet teacher come on the weekends uh, or on the, on the afternoons after school, trombone teacher, percussion teacher. And so hiring those people and getting those people to come in and do those things is a little bit like having a school within a school. So it's like I have the band hall and the music area, if, if, if that was my quote unquote, maybe isn't the best term, but kind of my kingdom, so to speak, if that right. was my domain, then having a lot of taking ownership and responsibility of putting the right people and the right information and in, information in front of the students to help them to be successful, um, to me, was just sort of a natural fit to move into administration because, and I think um, opinions may vary on what I'm about to tell you, um, I was fortunate to fortunate or unfortunate, I think it's fortunate, but I don't know that I would recommend no. moving from administrate. Well, moving from the classroom on a campus to administration on the same campus to where you know I'm the I'm a I was a band director for two years at a school, um, and I opened that school in 2006. It's called Baines Middle School, and then in the third year. Uh, I completed my principal certification and I was hired to be an, an assistant principal. So I on the same campus. So I went from being a peer to some of my teachers or my, my uh, right. teacher friends to now in some cases supervising them, you know, doing their evaluations. And so that that was a really interesting dynamic. Um, so right I don't know the dark that, side. Record, that, well, yeah. Yeah, so to, someone said not, that. Somebody said, someone that. said that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I choose not to do that because there's a lot of joy in the work. Right. I agree. So but that's that was kind of my thing. I felt like I had a, I think I had a strength for organization and seeing a bigger picture and having the, the band program as being like a school within a school gave me an opportunity to practice that skill set on a small scale and then moving into an assistant principal role, then the associate principal, ultimately principal. It's just, it felt to me like a natural progression. I just put a little asterisk next to not sure if it's always the best thing to um, you know move up on the campus that you were previously a teacher yeah. it worked fine for me because I was at that school for almost 10 years um, but uh, yeah that was yeah that's how it came about for me yeah this is actually interesting because I, I I Keith I, I swear I just wrote a post about how sometimes there is it there like we are sometimes a little there's a little jealousy I'm not saying that happened in your situation. I don't know the situation, but you know, the, the dark side comment is not because administrators go to the dark side, but it's somehow we feel that you've left us and you are going against us when we're, it was just a, it's a different role. It's not, you know, it's, it, it's still collegial. And so I, I really appreciate you sharing that. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting as I listen to you speak about that experience as a band director and I feel it'd be, beneficial if we looked at more um people in the arts in to go into administration because of the of the skill set you know bringing people together you know bringing that tune together i think that's really powerful unless you're i don't know if you've ever seen the movie the the guy who runs the band in whiplash have you ever seen the oh movie? no shoot <laughs> okay. then no no that's we don't crazy. watch it that's you know, an amazing that movie you and knew that's what i was going to say right and whiplash yep exactly that is actually one of my favorite movies. Have you seen it? You've seen it, right? I've seen it, yeah. It's hard to watch. That's the so good, scenes, though. It's pretty hard to watch. It's such a good, it's such an interesting, um, it's such an interesting, it's such an interesting movie in the sense that um, I, there's, a, I'm not, I'm not the evil guy. <laughs> I'm not that, but I also appreciate the continuous strive for perfection. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I'm always trying to get better. I always try to chant. We, you and I were talking about this before we got on the podcast. We are very, can be very hard on ourselves and we have this. And I think, you know, the highest expectations that anyone should have for anybody is for yourself. That to me is something, but when you expect everyone to have the same expectations of yourself that you have, it's different. It, that for me is more of a modeling thing than, you know, cause people have different expectations of themselves at different times. So I, if anyone, if, uh, yeah, uh, I'll give you a little caveat. If you have not seen that movie, I highly suggest it, but understand <laughs> is there's some stuff going on, right? So it is a very interesting movie. It's, I absolutely love it. All right. So you find out that you're going to be opening this brand new school. Uh, and what a wonderful opportunity to basically create something from scratch. So when you started doing that, what were some of the things that maybe happened or you didn't 
necessarily know would be a part of that process that you kind of went through that was different from like going to somewhere that's already pretty like established. And, you know, cause you, you told me, um, not only do you not, like, you don't have a, you have no staff when you're starting you, there's no students that have, and one of the things I, it was really, when I was there, you had students there on that day, even though it was all admin. And I, I talked to some of them and it was just, so they were so excited, which was really, really cool. They were so excited about being part of a new school, being a part of that culture. So what were some of the things that, you know, that you went through that you didn't know you're going to go through as you went through this process? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, you do start out solo, right? It starts with you. The superintendent right. the board says, hey, man, you're it. Tag. Wow. Um, so the I guess there's sort of a, at first, sort of like a reality of, wow, this is a really big deal. You you only exactly. get one, you only get one chance to have a the first, first day. Yeah. You only get one chance to open a school and it has to be done right. So, you know, feeling this kind of that pressure, going back to what you were saying is like, you can, this idea of, of wanting to, you can't be perfect. You mm -hmm. want it to be. And I, yeah. I think it, by nature, me as a musician, I think perfection is what we strive for. But really what it's all about is kind of making progress. Yeah. But for me, I, and the, the things that, that I went through that were maybe a challenge, um, just getting, I, I would say just maybe, um, getting a sense of the process for hiring and the timeline and things of that nature. And what do, what is it that I'm going to be looking for? Because I, I did not want the school's vision or mission to be my vision right. and just my, uh, my articulation of, it. I wanted to develop something collaboratively um, with all of our stakeholders, with students, staff, uh, parents, and even community members who maybe don't have kids in the school, but maybe where the school is. Yeah. Uh, but you got to have some direction first, right? So that's kind of what I meant earlier when I was saying kind of valuing direction over speed. Yeah. So, um, but so trying to build, a, um, I guess, a, a coalition of people around the ideas that we're trying to accomplish without just without directly dictating what the vision of the school will be um, specifically. So I guess for me, it was one of the one of the values that I have for the school is this idea of involving people in the decisions that affect them. So a little while ago, when you were talking about, we were discussing how the, the mascot and the colors came about. Mm -hmm. I, I very much wanted that ownership from the students and parents and staff um, to, to see that process unfold and not just talk about it and say, I, I, I want to um, involve people in the decisions that affect them, but actually have processes where they can right. see that in action. So um, it's kind of like a blank slate, right? Like I'm not a phys I'm not a visual artist, but if you can picture like a, a blank canvas, that's really what this school was from from the jump. And so my my vision for the school is that it's going to be a place where modern and relevant uh, learning takes place. It, the building itself, as you've seen, you've been here, is mm -hmm. extremely modern. It's got a lot of collaborative spaces, and so how are we going to leverage the physical space to get the maximum value for our students and to add value to every student's every day through academics, uh, athletics, and the arts? Um, so it's been fun putting that all together and building a team, and probably more than any one thing, uh, I've had a lot of support. I don't know if I'm really directly answering your question, but yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of support from the people uh, that are that are my peers. Um, I've I also went to a lot of people who've opened campuses before. Hmm. The Jostens organizations, the Jostens Renaissance organization has been very helpful. Uh, couple, put me in touch with several principals in the Dallas area that have opened some schools, and we've we've had some meetings there. Some of my peers, a friend of mine locally in Katy, opened Jordan High School a couple of years ago, and we've you know talked through. Like the question really kind of, kind of came down to: What are some things you you did when you opened the school that absolutely worked, and you do it again? What are some things that you wish you had done but hadn't done? And then what are some things that you did? You're thinking, man, why did I ever think that was going to be successful? So <laughs> I asked that, why I asked people those questions, like, so get some insight of people who've been there before. And uh, that has, that has been helpful, but nonetheless, we're still, we're not going to be a, a version 2.0 of some other campus in our district. We're going to be who we are. We're going to be the Crawford chargers. And yes, maybe we've got kids coming to us from two or three other campuses um, and, you know, parts unknown. Um, mm. but we're going to make our own identity. I, I love that. The, okay. There's one thing I really loved is the idea of getting input, but then ensuring people see 
their their input in the actions, if that makes sense. That so I'll, I'll give you an example of this. And I've I've always I've I've challenged this for years, and it's really kind of been something that's bugged me. Is we'll say, oh, we like we want student voice, and you know it's really important. So then we'll ask a bunch of questions of our kids, and then we'll pat ourselves on the back because we asked a question. But then I, I'm like, well, what did you do with the information? So did you just are you patting yourself because you asked the question, but did nothing with it and just kept going on doing the same thing you were doing? Or did you actually say like, Hey, we, we got student input. Here's what we did because of it. Here's what we didn't do because of a, B and C. Cause I think it's actually important to say like, Hey, we know we got input on this and here's some of the things that were said and here's why we can't do them. Like, I think that's actually an important aspect of it too, is saying we can't do this because of this which is better than you're not going to do it because you just ignored what they said, right? At least give me some reasons why you didn't take that feedback. So actually getting feedback from people and then acting upon it is a, is not just an important aspect of building a brand new school. I think it's about what we do continu continuously every day to serve the people, um, you know, that we, that, we, you know, that we work with every single day. All right. I know you're super busy. I feel guilty for having you here because I know you got a million things to be doing. So here's, here's the last question I'm going to ask you. If you could look at the end of year one, what would success look like to you as, as the principal? What would success, you know, and like success is not, I think when things, success is a very personal thing. And I know there's like a school success, but you as a principal in your very first year, what would be a successful year for you at the end of this year, what would that look like? So I think you've been taking a peek at my teacher interview question list, because that's actually one of my teacher <laughs> questions. Uh, what, what is your, what are your hopes and dreams for Crawford high school? Yeah. Uh, you know, now what is it going to be when our first graduating mm -hmm. class walks across the stage? So yeah, for me at the end of year one, so if we're fast forwarding to like May of 2024 and we take stock of, of the year that's gone behind us, you know, what does success look like? So for me, number one, uh, we have to get, we collaboratively created a, a vision and a mission that all of our stakeholders can get behind and get excited about talking about, um, that there is excitement among like our rising eighth graders, or excuse me, our rising freshmen who are currently eighth graders, that they are really looking forward to coming to school, that uh, coming to Crawford High School, um, that there's a sense of excitement around, okay, so we, we got year one under our belt. We we got our fight song done. We got our school song done. What's next? What can we build next? Mm -hmm. So one of the things is that we're working on right now is this idea of a of a new coming event. We don't have homecoming because, you know, you've got to wait several, you've got to get your first graduating class across right. the state and, right. and a whole other year, right, before they can come back and say they're home. So we're looking at doing mm -hmm. a, a popular thing for new campuses called a new coming event. So don't know what that looks like yet, but the kids uh, are, have been talking about it and they want to do something. So our team of our, our staff and kids are going to get together and like, what do y'all want that to be? And let's create that together. So, um, yeah. So looking back on the year, it's like feeling like, you know what, look at, look at what all we did together. We thought we weren't going to get through some things, but we made it through. And that really fits perfectly with um, the idea of, of a charger, because one of the one of our hashtags on our social media is this idea of forge ahead, hashtag forge ahead. Hmm. And when you think about a forge, you know, you think about a blacksmith with implements and tools and an anvil and heat. And so they're, they're molding and shaping uh, uh, a horseshoe to be specific to that horse hoof. And, um, it, but, but that, that metal that the blacksmith is, is molding and shaping has to go through heat and pressure through that, that's that oven to be able to mold, be moldable. And so like the, the heat and pressure we experience in our first year are those experiences, those challenges and opportunities that we work through together, because ultimately our goal, when we, when we graduate students from our school, our ultimate goal is to help them be set up for success for whatever they're choosing to do post high school, whether it's to go to college, go directly into the military, or go directly into a trade of some kind, uh, or to a trade school to learn a craft. So um, it, that idea of looking back and going through all the experiences with pride, with the things that we went through, we didn't think we'd make it, but we made it. Not only did we make it, but we we didn't just survive, we mm -hmm. thrived. Yeah. And so we went, we went through that crucible, uh, that forge together. And now, now, now we're on for bigger and better things in year number two.
in that they, that you know like I, every time i'm asking these questions i'm gonna be honest with you i have like a hope of what you're gonna say and you just basically nail everything so i feel like i'm interviewing you a little bit i'm like yes that's what i wanted to hear because that that actually i know your vision for what you want is actually that we create the vision and the actions together that you know people have a certain sense of pride in what we've created together through this process like you know like for everybody that's part of your school right now this is this is gonna be something they're all gonna look back on you know 10 30 years from now you know you're 30 years into your career they're gonna look back that they are part of this process and you know having that ownership over what they created is something really really powerful and so keith thanks for being on the podcast today it, it's amazing because we had some technical difficulties getting on here and you know as much as i was like oh this sucks i'm like yeah you probably have been dealing with this every single day you know because you know when you build it i i was part of a school that was in year two and they were still dealing with stuff that wasn't working and stuff like that too so i can't even imagine you know how complex that would be in in year one you know buildings not getting done rooms not being ready that kind of thing so thanks so much for taking time of your day please say hi to everyone on your staff and then fort ben isd they were so lovely to me and just really welcoming. And I appreciate that, but I, I wish you an amazing first year and thank you so much for sharing your vision and your hopes for your, for your, for you and your school community. All right, George. Hey, it's a pleasure. I enjoyed visiting with you and thank you for everything you've done for our school. And we're going to keep forging ahead. All right. I got my shirt, so I'm going to be pumping around. I wear it all the time though. So I love it. All right. Thanks man. everyone for listening. Have a wonderful day.